Hey guys, Clumsy here and welcome back to another flight with the Premier 1A from Carenado for X-Plane. I'm really loving this plane. As you guys might know, I'm a huge fan of Premier 1 driver and uh, yeah, just being able to fly the same plane as he is is such a treat for me. I hope it's the same for you. So right now we are uh, already set up. We are uh, lined up and waiting, waiting for you. So I started the engines already set the flight plan and everything so we will we'll be uh, coming from let me show you the flight plan origin is Kilo Papa Charlie uh, Whiskey going to Kilo Papa Lima Delta and that is a job I found in uh, FS Economy maybe not that one but it's uh, this one coming from Port Clinton in Ohio going to Portland, Indiana. No significant stars or anything of that sort. SID stars, uh, no ILS, but we do have our nav. So it's going to be a pretty simple flight coming from the northeast here, traveling southwest, departing and arriving runway 09 in both airports, right? That's how it will look later as we arrive in Indiana, in Portland. Okay, so let's see. Am I still missing something? Let's go back to the plane and check if I am missing some things. Legs are good. I will, will be cruising at a relatively low altitude today. Only uh, flight level 200 because it's going to be a short trip. It's going to be less than 200 nautical miles. So I think that should be more than enough height actually. Yeah. So we don't spend so much fuel trying to climb and climb. Okay. Uh, oxygen, I pulled it, I armed it, um, pitot heat, windshield heat is good, avionics are on, generators are open, uh, what I am missing actually is the X economy, I have to load the passengers and start the flight proper so that the fuel level is going to be updated as well, there you go, 680 pounds, I stand corrected, that's actually pounds, not kilos, 680 pounds on each side, there you go. So if I double check the weight of the aircraft, we're at 11,000 pounds now. I'm going to go with the U.S. Uh, units just so I won't get confused because most of the manuals are in uh, U.S. references anyway. All right, so 11,000 pounds. Let's double check that against the performance table so we can set our ref speeds. And uh, I have some items I want to share with you guys as well, but I'll do that when we get on the ground already, or when we get uh, off the ground rather. So 11,000 pounds, static air temperature is, uh, if you look here, static air temperature is 7 degrees Celsius. So if you go back to that other one, 7 degrees is somewhere in between 0 and 10, so somewhere here in 11,000 pounds, that's this range. 103, 108, 122. Right, let's let's do that then. References. V1 is 103. VR is 108. I hope I'm remembering this right. And V2 is 122. VREF will worry about that later as we descend. Okay. I think we are good there. Altimeter has been set based on the... Uh, the airport weather conditions we are good to go yes i think so i hope i didn't miss anything but we will know if ever let's arm that just in case of a rejected takeoff okay we're good flight level 200 assigned in the altitude selector Mm, let's turn on our flight director, flight level change, and uh, nav. I'm not sure if I can turn that on already. All right, but that's good. So at least I have a guide once we take off. The flight director will guide me on how I should be banking and uh, leveling. Good. All right, let's get this started. Also, I start, I'll start the music after we take off for a little bit of fun. Okay. Exterior view one last time before we take off. Let's do this. Winds are 090, so exactly runway heading, so that's going to be 
providing a perfect headwind for our takeoff. Yep. Yeah. Airspeed is alive. Bleed air is. Uh, okay, bleed air is enabled. <laughs> Hopefully, don't make the same mistake as last time. V1, rotate. And. Uh, positive rate. Lift the gears. Let's see how that looks in external view. Looks so pro. And let me go and refer to the flight director. Okay, now I have to take a look. Okay, AJ's is the next uh, destination, right? Yes, okay. So it's, it is guiding me on the right path here. Alright, and it's also going through the flight level change altitude. So it's trying to keep a 220 indicated airspeed level. So we are climbing, but not at the risk of stalling. And I can actually enable your damper as well. That should help a bit with the stability of the plane. Doesn't feel as rocky. All right. Just continue our bank here and uh, we'll adjust later on as necessary. I still haven't turned on autopilot because um, I flew yesterday, mostly VFR. Just enjoying the the plane and how it flies, and it's just a real pleasure. So I think right now a flight flight director guidance is uh, more than enough for me. Okay, and we have successfully taken off, so I can actually disarm that already. No, 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 no. Arm, disarm that, and lock, lift dump. We don't want that opening in the middle of the flight. That will be a recipe for disaster. Maybe trim down a bit and my favorite scene. Breaking through the clouds as we climb. My second favorite maybe because my favorite is descending from up the clouds descending down and seeing the, the runway. That is like super beautiful scenery. All right. So what we are seeing here in the primary flight display, uh, we see an Alt S. That means it will try to follow the altitude in the selector, flight level 200. That's what it's aiming for. So that gives us a bit of a guide on uh, what it's going to do. So now I think I've had enough fun. I can turn on autopilot here. Let it do its proper job. We've reached 10,000 feet, I can actually turn off landing lights. And once we hit 18,000 feet, flight level 180, I can switch to standard pressure. But for now, we'll keep it that way. We can actually turn off as well seatbelt signs. And then I can start with my updates. Alright, so I wanted to discuss the, a couple of uh, common issues encountered with this craft and uh, what the different uh, different uh, workarounds have been and what is being planned for it and um, let's, let's start with the gear so as you saw a while ago landing gear was perfectly fine for me but not everyone has the same experience some people have been having problems with it let's go with a different view let's go with a P1D view which is that one right that one and that one. B1D views for the win. Let's go with that. So yeah, um, some people have been pro having problems with the landing gear. And um, it's not really a problem every time. Some people have been having problems with it because of like incorrect installation of the aircraft. So some settings have been missed there. But some people have been saying that the landing gear doesn't work but that's by design in some cases what you have to take note of is what airspeed you're uh, flying at because there are actually maximum uh, operating uh, how do you call it yeah airspeed limitations so if you look here the maximum gear extension the maximum airspeed you should have is 200 knots i had that um, in one of my flights I was coming in hat, 
hot at an airport. So I was traveling at over 200 knots, but I was rushing to make it to land. So I tried lowering the landing gear and nothing happened. Like this toggle went down, but the lights didn't come up. Nothing was moving. And I was thinking, what is happening? And then I, f I, I noticed that I was over 200. So, and then it made a lot of sense. So it has that safety feature. And based on the forums, it's actually something in real life as well. That if you're above 200 knots, even if you um, flick the lever, it will not really move until you reach 200 knots. So take note of that. And uh, the retraction, the maximum for retraction is even lower. It's 180 knots here. So for example, if you take off, once you take off and maybe you forgot to retract the landing gear, so you started uh, building up airspeed, if you go to a point where you're beyond 180, 180, and we should have gone to standard pressure now. There you go. That beep is for a uh, thousand uh, feet left warning or notification, however you look at it. So yeah, it's um, if you go beyond 180, then you won't be able to retract your landing gear anymore. So you have to be very careful with that. Okay, let's reduce our thrust here. There we go. So n and now we can start uh, building up airspeed. Now, if I consult my performance tables and uh, look at two one zero high speed cruise, actually two zero zero, so should be somewhere in between here. Six five seven. 639 so somewhere in, in between lower than these numbers basically let's look at the isa deviation isa deviation that's one of the issues still um, let me turn off track ir for now so we can get a more stable uh, view here isa deviation on the multifunction display on the mfd is inaccurate don't follow that that's one of the issues so look for the isa in the prog section of the FMS, go to next page and you'll see the ISA deviation is actually negative 3 degrees. So negative 3 is the right number. And that is already known by the developers. They'll fix that display in the uh, next update, which is probably a week in a week or so. At least that's what, that's what they said. So ISA deviation is negative 3. So we should be somewhere close here. So we should be able to get to an indicated uh, max speed of 0.70 let's go with for 0.70 percent rpm should be 102.1 n1 and right now we are 102.9 so we just have to lower that a bit 102.1 exactly like so yeah and that's for high speed cruise so you can see if you go any any faster than this going in that red range in the speed tape that's going to be very dangerous already that goes beyond the how do you call it structural integrity of the plane so we should never go beyond that okay but yeah 102.1 should be okay and if we go and look even more 102.1 we should maybe we should lower that a bit because we're not really at 21,000 feet we're only at 20,000 flight level 200 so maybe 100 1.7 just for a bit of buffer 1.5 1, 1. should be good yeah it should be okay this one I'm still a bit lost what that blue thing is is that yeah it's sometimes it's there sometimes it's not and I don't really understand it it's a bit weird to me so I'm not sure if there's a bug there to be honest But yeah, we'll keep it that way for now. I also reported a bug, and I'm not sure if they'll be able to fix it. But right now, the radar can be a bit confusing because you can increase the range like this, but you really wouldn't have a clue how far that is, right? Because the, there should be a number here, actually, here and here, which says how many miles that is from your plane to that point. So this would say 50, that would say 100, or if you zoom in, it would show 25 and then 50, something like that. So those numbers should be there, but they're not. So it's kind of 
difficult to gauge really how far a thing is. And I should set my heading as well. Let's sync that. Uh, find the right pixel. There you go. Heading 250. We have quite a huge headwind here. 49 knots. So our ground speed, even our, if our true airspeed is 423 knots, our ground speed is only 373 knots. Not as good, but not too shabby. Not that bad either. Top of descent is coming in 40 miles, 43 miles to be exact. So let's keep our eyes peeled for that. Uh, airspeed is still climbing. I might have to lower it a bit more to be on the safe side. We'll see. Fuel is more than enough. The fuel computation, the fuel calculation, the in the FS economy is so off. I don't really rely on it anymore. I kind of like look at that and multiply it by four or something, but it's totally inaccurate for me. Anyway, so we are on our way, and let me go and move on to the next item. So the the landing gear issue quote-unquote issue it's not really an issue in most cases there are some who really have a problem with the installation but they are uh, like the minority or I would say isolated cases what else um, the transponder has been a huge issue you can see I haven't set it I forgot but not really important in our case not really not really coordinating with ATC at the moment normally you would set it, it to one or two Uh, but the problem is you cannot set it manually right now I think it's automatically being changed if you're on the ground and when you're taking off but when uh, you're working with ATC like VATSIM they sometimes request for ident for specific settings and uh, the automatic settings are a bit wonky with that so that has been acknowledged by the developers as well and they will be fixing it in the next update in the meantime, they did provide, uh, Nojo is one of the developers, I believe, and he's very responsive, answered all our questions immediately, and um, he mentioned that uh, the uh, ATC has, there's a workaround where you can set this to manual so that it doesn't automatically change, and then you can just play with the data refs and do some kind of scripting so that you can set the transponder status on your own so you can take a look at the forums check that just google it carinado explain forum and you the first list in google that's that's the forums that i'm talking about google is a powerful thing right <laughs> anyway that's for the transponder the feature that i'm really requesting for is uh, vnav vertical navigation where if you click autopilot normally what you would expect is it would climb on, your, on its own but it doesn't really do it here you have to descend on your own so that's why I'm really looking for the top of descent here because once we reach that even if I set my altitude lower like for example if I look at legs here the next one would be 6800 so if I set my altitude to uh, flight level 068 something like that even when we reach the top of descent it will not do anything because vnav is not implemented even if i click that they actually said that the vnav button doesn't do anything right now they disabled it but they did explain why and it's it's a very understandable issue because they said the explain the default implementation of vnav is mainly made for air airliners so even though they have a default FMS implemented, which should support the default VNAV, the default VNAV is mainly for airliners in such a way that it expects the plane to have auto throttle. So it, it changes the throttle settings as well, in addition to changing the pitch and everything. Yeah? And there is no option right now to only have VNAV but not control the throttle. And this plane doesn't have auto throttle in real life, so they cannot just implement that. And that's one of the main problems that they have. That's the main problem they have with VNAV. So they can implement it, but I think what that will do is it will automatically move the throttle here, which will be a bit unrealistic. 
So they decided to not implement VNAV at the moment right now. The good news is they said that it's actually part of the... They already raised this issue to explain to the developers, the official developers, I think Laminar maybe. And um, they acknowledged it and they confirmed, the developers confirmed that it will be fixed in a future version of Explain. So it will uh, provide support for the planes with no auto throttle. And once that happens, VNAV will work for this plane then. So it's mainly an explain limitation, we could say. But yeah, that's uh, that's one of the problems. And um, yeah, it's it's really uh, frustrating initially because you expect VNAV to work for this very luxurious plane. But then again, yeah, it's kind of difficult as well. So I kind of uh, understand it. And uh, right now, I'm getting more uh, exposure to uh, how to really handle the plane manually. There's the top of descent. That circle there is the top of descent, and we'll have to make sure that uh, we pitch accordingly once that happens. I did set up a 3 degree descent, I think, angle. Yeah, 3 degrees. So we'll have to simulate that on our own. Okay. Top of descent, 7 miles away. Let's take note of that and uh, plan accordingly. Uh, true air temperature is negative 26.7. There are a lot of clouds, so maybe I need to put in some uh, ice protection here. That this should be on. Stall warning and stab. Stabilizer auto uh, uh, stab. ice protection. Um, once we start our descent, I'll turn on the uh, anti-ice for the engine in the wing, just to be on the safe side. And so when we're, once we're past that, I'll turn them off. Just to be sure. Yeah? Okay. Uh, top of descent in 2 miles. Alright. Uh, 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 let's take a look there. That's the 2 mile warning. So that's the problem with VNAV. And that's why we'll have to do this manually for now, but that's fine. That's uh, part of the fun anyway. So what I like to do, top of descent is zero. And if you look at the descent, descent is now active. So we should start descending now, but it's not doing anything, right? If you look, yeah, it's still flying level. So what we need to do is we can click on vertical speed once. That allows us to change vertical speed or Click it again so that it says pitch there and now we can just scroll up here and you can see the flight director is actually pitching down. So you can control how many degrees you are descending and have to make sure that we decrease on the throttle here. That we don't go beyond that red area in the speed tape. Because as we're descending, we are picking up more speed. Right? That looks good. Is that 3 degrees? Yeah, I think that's more or less 3 degrees. So we can just keep that. And then we can keep maybe a 290 uh, speed. 290 knot descent. Or maybe even lower. Because as we go and hit uh, 10,000, we should be at 250 knots only. Okay, that's where we're going. The is 3008, so once we hit 18,000, I'll have to set this up to 3008. There you go. And let's start, let's keep on slowing down as well. So by the time we reach 10,000, we'll uh, be at 250 knots indicated airspeed. Okay, no clouds yet. So I don't think we need much ice protection just yet. Uh, do I need to turn on anything? Let's turn on the seatbelt signs just to be on the safe side. And let me turn on uh, um, track IR again so it's easier to look around and uh, keep situational awareness as they call it. Lowering the throttle bit by bit. Alright. And while that's happening, let me continue with my speech. The next common issue, or well, the issue I noticed was with the lift dump. So the lift dump here, there is no hotkey for it. You need the lift dump when you land. 
when you land, you have to enable that because that acts like the reverser, the speed brake slash reverser that helps the plane really sit on the ground. It that removes all lift. That makes the tires really fall flat on the ground so that the brakes will have full effect. And that helps with the braking and it's an essential part of the landing based on what the P1D says. Okay. Normally, you would also have something here which says, um, in real life, you would have something here which says how heavy you will be when you get to the runway. But I don't think that's modeled in. Yeah, that, will, that sometimes helps with determining what kind of VREF you need to be at. Okay, slowing down a bit more, we are at 255 knots. So we should be making it fine for the, uh, the speed limit below 10,000 feet. That should be fine. All right, let, let me have a look at the, the weight here. In the meantime, 10,400. So let's say 10,200, 10,000. Let's use that as our reference for the weight. And let me look at the performance table here. Well, there's in the uh, normal procedures, there is a table for the landing. And that 10,000 feet should be around 109 VREF. Let's make it 110, just to be more accurate there, just a bit. Still a lot of clouds, still continuing our descent. Okay, refs, VREF is 110, right? Yeah, that's actually set up correctly already. All right, great. And since we're doing VNAV, I don't need to set any, uh, or RNAV rather, I don't really need to set any of the navs or the courses. Just keep it with the FMS and it will have a virtual glide slope for us. That should be fine. Once you reach 10,000 feet, I'll have to enable the... I'll have to turn on the landing lights. And I'll uh, start preparing for approach. Yeah, we're coming close. Air temperature is negative 5. Are we at risk of icing? Might be. So to be on the safe side, let me turn them on. Until we go beyond the clouds at least. Because I've had that problem already when I was flying with Zebo 737 once. I just ignored it and my plane just dropped like a piano. I think how they, how they call it. Okay, landing, recog lights, and we should be good there. So if I look at the legs here, 6,841 in AJ's, in the egg, should be above 2.5, okay, that should be fine. Alright, once we pa go past AJ's, then I'll... Uh, change the altitude selector again but for now I think we can keep 6800 actually 69 should be okay there we go so the descent is not perfect because it's manual but it's not bad yeah it's not bad and I guess we could start slowing down here as well because by the time we do our approach I'll, I want to be in 200 knots so I can freely lower my landing gear remember the maximum operating speed there 200 knots so that your landing gear will extend otherwise it will not work good everything looks good there yes okay what else the lift dump yes so the lift dump there is no hotkey so normally what you would do is you you land right you look for the runway you uh, do all the stuff you need to do. Let me increase the throttle here a bit because we are losing airspeed. I want to keep it at 200 knots. What you do is you unlock this and once you land, once you hit the runway, you look here and then you click that, drag it to enable the lift dump. Which is very hard to do, taking your eyes off the runway like that and I already have track IR and, st and it's still hard. So how much more if you need to use your mouse while landing? So I was requesting for a hotkey 
there were a couple of requests for a hotkey and there was nothing built in, in right now so I think that will come in in a later point maybe in the next update but they did tell me the data refs for it so you could set it manually so I actually have a Lua script um, where is it I don't think you can see it here yeah but I, I wrote a, a Lua script compatible with fly with Lua you can find it in the forums I posted it there you can just look for the lift dump uh, topic and uh, what it does is it creates a new command let me actually show you so if you go to keyboard and look for lift dump yeah you see clumsy hold lift dump toggle lift dump and you can assign a key here or you can assign that to the joystick for me it's actually in the uh, in one of my keys here <laughs> in the wheel because the, the, the g27 wheel is right next to my yoke so if I look here, yeah, that's toggle lift dump right there, button 7. So you can assign a key for it so you don't have to look. And that's already as good as I can do. Yeah, let me enable, let me arm the ignition here for takeoff. Well, for go around mainly. In case we screw up the landing. Hopefully not. But we'll see. Right. We are good to go. What else am I missing? What else am I missing? Uh, during these times, I really have to consult with the checklist, but I usually keep forgetting. Ah, I can turn off anti-ice. Should not be at risk of that anymore. Good. All right, it's not the best weather right now. Almost never is when I'm flying, but it's pretty realistic, right? pretty realistic also the clouds are a bit crooked like that which makes me feel like I'm flying off level now I'm really flying off level because we're banking but <laughs> it's a different topic okay I can set the altitude now to 250 and we should be able to capture the pseudo glide slope soon enough let me pitch down actually you know what let me just use vertical speed that's more convenient, more gradual for me. And dial down on the throttle so we keep the 200 airspeed thingy. Yes, that's a technical term. Let me turn off the music here so we can focus on the landing and focus on the sounds. Let me make that a bit sharper. That should be more like it. Now I don't have the runway in sight at all. I'm guessing it's somewhere there, but man, the weather really sucks right now. Hmm. What else? Um hmm. I think I mentioned almost everything already. The ILS, um, I figured out how to make it work. If you remember from the previous episode, I was a bit confused with it. It works with the preset. So right now, th what this means is the FMS is uh, the one which is active. So the arrows you see here are from the FMS. If I click the preset, what that does is it replaces the FMS with the with VOR2 here. So that's like the, the standby navigation. And when you go approaching ILS, you have to switch that because VOR2 would be consistent with your course 2, I think, and your nav as well. So your, if you set up your ILS frequency and course there, and once you switch the preset, then the glide slope should, should come active. That's basically how it should work. And I am really traveling pretty fast here now. Just realize I have to continue descending. At least we're starting to see the ground now. And let's have a look outside. It's going to it's going to be a bit noisy. It's pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. Okay, good. There's the glide slope. So we can actually now hit approach. And that should I think 
level it off for us. So I don't need to rely on vertical speed anymore. I can just let the glide slope do its work. Should work. There we go. And now you can see, even if I don't have, I'm not specifying any settings, it's capturing the glide slope and it's making me descend on its own. So I'm guessing the runway should be right there. Oh, I can hardly see it. No, I cannot see it at all, actually. Nope. So thank goodness for instrumentation, right? And now with the 200 knots, I can lower the landing gear. It's going to work. There it is. There's the runway. Okay, I see it now. I see it now. Perfect. Let's lower the flaps as well. Do it bit by bit. So that we are at that VREF as we approach the runway. What I'm not sure yet is what that is for. That 140 line is for. Is it in the ref somewhere? The VF2. What is that VF2 for? Anyway, not the time to uh, think about that. More flaps. Flaps are fully down now. Okay, good. I'm going to keep it at around 60% N1. That is the general tip from P1D. He says, uh, yeah, at around 60% N1 is the around the right thrust for landing normally. And yes, it looks like it. We are slowing down here bit by bit. We need to slow down a bit more though. Okay. And I think from here I can take it. Turn off autopilot, turn off the yaw damper, and uh, do it on our own. Yes, we need to lose more speed. We need to climb a bit more. That looks looks more like it. Wish me luck, guys. Papi lights 2-2. Two, two. So far, so good. Pitch up. Pitch up so we lose a bit more airspeed. Oh, and it's so we don't land on the field. <laughs> okay, now I'm uh, a bit in trouble here. There we go, back to two puppy lights. Just trimming as we go. And I need to lose more speed. There we have it. Two lights, one light. Okay, I have my lift dump ready, yes. Going to idle, just cruising along here. Floating a bit is fine. Yeah, it's super floaty. There we go. Flying a bit of brakes there. Actually, you know what, don't think I need brakes even just let it no I think I need brakes because I'm reaching the end of the runway but yeah that wasn't too bad right a bit floaty in there but not too shabby and if you look at the lift dump I was able to use my hotkey you might have heard it as well there we go turn, turn it on and off and then use the, the retract speed brake right here to fully retract them don't worry we'll, we'll uh, take a look at the uh, oh there's actually uh, turn off here We'll look at the replay later. And uh, it's not the best, but it's one of the better landings I've done. I've done way worse. <laughs> and yes, it's a bit floaty. Because th this, this plane really wants to fly. Even at idle, if you nose up a bit, it really wants to fly. And I have this tendency to really pull the nose up when I'm landing because I'm scared. And I think the only thing I can avoid that is just... Practice, practice, practice. But it's getting better. And uh, yeah, eventually we'll, we'll get it. Okay, let me clean up here. Flaps up. Don't go too fast. Uh, landing lights off. Recoke. 
to keep that on. Hop, 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 hop. Stay in the middle. Stay in the middle, bro. Keep your eyes on the road. And turn off strobes as well. Don't need that anymore. Um, can we stop here? That looks a bit small for us, but maybe some... Uh, we'll find a hangar that fits. Anyway, we'll stop here in the middle and uh, we'll let the passengers go down. And that will be a job well done. Not too bad, right? And I think I was able to cover most of the stuff I was trying to say. So hopefully, if you guys give this a chance, this plane a chance, you'll know what to do in case you encounter some of those common um, issues. And hopefully I was able to help up with a bit. Right, that's good enough. Set the parking brake. And uh, lock that. Turn off avionics before we turn off the engine. And from there, I think we just um, click that and click that. Engines are dying down and uh, I think we can turn off pito heat and everything else. Right. Fuel pumps, bleed air. There you go. Put that back in. And turn off the battery. Beautiful. From there, we can open the doors and uh, let the passengers disembark. Thank you for flying with clumsy flights. <laughs> Let's uh, make that. Finish the flight. And we have monies. Let's see how much we earned there. If we go to log, that's actually one of my biggest earnings there. Look, I've been flying for a couple of times already. These are all the flights I've done. So getting a bit of practice, but yeah, still not enough. Still not enough. There we go. 6,000 income, 1,000 or 700 for the plane. That's wet though, so that includes uh, the, uh, the fuel. That's good. So I can just go all out. No need for uh, fuel efficiency. And then uh, ground crew and booking fee. Yeah, that's cool. All right, great. So let's go and watch that landing before we end. Now, with the landing, you'll need to raise your door up again with the replay. But otherwise, it will stay that way. It's a bit buggy that way. But yeah. Okay. Let's see how that looks from the outside. Let's rewind a bit here. There we go. Okay, ignore that. Uh, that's the autopilot being disabled. Right now, autopilot is still there. Let's fast forward a bit. There's, that's when I turn it off. This is when I started adjusting. Not too bad, right? Quite a stable approach. VRF. I think we kind of reached the VRF properly, more or less. 114 knots. Yeah. And if you look outside. Yeah, that's not too bad. Only thing, the only mistake I did was I lifted the nose up. So if you look here. If I do a slow-mo replay. So it's good. Even from here, it's good. Center line and everything. But then, last minute, because I got scared with how fast I was, I pulled up. And so that caused the plane to kind of take off again. And then I enabled the lift dump a bit too late. I should be enabling it right after the wheels fall off. After the wheels go down. That maybe helps to avoid that lift off, that secondary lift off, is how they have to call it. So normally, you do this. Once the tires touch, enable the lift up already. But yeah, that's something I forgot to do. And from there, it's pretty straightforward then. 
that's how the uh, the lift dump looks like so it's like a hardcore speed brakes much steeper angled sp steep speed brakes right well I'm happy with that I'm happy with that and I'm glad that that was caught on camera as they say okay but yes Let's leave it there, guys. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed that one. I really enjoyed it for sure, and hopefully I was able to give a few tips. Anyway, let me know what you think. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up, like button if you did enjoy this video. Comment, share with your friends, all that stuff. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. And if you have any suggestions or comments for the next videos, let me know, okay? Thanks for watching, and uh, Glimpsy Flying. Bye-bye.